Coming up on Network Africa, U.S. terminates funding for Zimbabwe rice groups ahead of election. Seven people die as forces from Uganda and DR Congo clash over Lake Edward. The International Criminal Court issues a second arrest warrant for Libyan militant Mahmoud al werfali Welcome to the program. I'm Millicent Walker. We'll begin with Zimbabwe, where the United States of America has terminated funding for three human rights and pro-democracy groups. A U.S. embassy spokesperson says the decision by Washington's aid arm to pull the plug followed a regular internal audit that uncovered unusual activity and non-compliance in the use of funds without providing any details. The affected groups are the Zimbabwe Human Rights Association, Cancelling Services Unit, CSU, a health clinic that provides medical treatment to victims of police torture and abuse, and Election Resource Centre. This is coming three weeks before the July 30th election, a move that analysts say could undercut the credibility of the country's first post-Mugabe vote. And to discuss further is a senior lecturer of international law at the Nasser State University, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. If you can hear me, the U.S. Embassy cited unusual activity and non-compliance as its decision uh, to pull the plug in funding three Zimbabwe rights groups. Are there political implications? The Political implications are many. There are many conspiracy theories. One is wondering why that decision is coming three weeks to the election, and why did the you said, United States Agency for International Development did not go into specifics. So some people see it as a way of withdrawing support so that uh, it will be very easy for the ruling government to win again because it is seen in many parts of Zimbabwe that uh, these human rights organizations, the NGOs, are pro-opposition. On the other hand, uh, you said, uh, having said they found unusual activity, that may mean that the money or whatever other resources they have provided for the NGOs have been misapplied. But everything remains in the realm of conjecture. So we have to wait for the specifics over time. Okay. Uh, some analysts, however, fear that the decision to terminate the funding of the rights groups will affect the credibility of the election as some of the organizations play important watchdog role, if you will. Do you share that? I don't think it will fundamentally affect the credibility of the election because outside these three NGOs, we are going to have the European Observer Mission. We are going to have the, uh, the African Union Observer Mission. We are going to have the SADC, South African Development Community Observer Mission. So if these three and many other NGOs within the countries certify the election as being free and fair, I think uh, the election will be regarded as free and fair. Moreover, the international community, especially Britain, the former colonial power seems to be in love with uh, Nangagwa. Uh, they have not said so, but uh, I think they believe he's coming back will bring stability or maintain stability in that country. So I think uh, if Britain certifies that election as free and fair, the international community will just play along. You, you mentioned love, but uh, in as much as the rights groups are denying any involvement and saying they're blanket embassy statements, um, without approval, some people believe that Harare's relationship with the international community might be tricky. 
in some way. Yes, it might be tricky, but uh, uh, proper analysis of uh, the entrenchment of ZANU-PF in Zimbabwean politics makes it clear where the whole thing will go. ZANU-PF is so much entrenched. Remember, about a decade ago, that uh, Moshe Shangara, when he was at the peak of his, his uh, uh, op being an opposition leader in Zimbabwean politics, he won uh, the leading vote, and they were to go for, for, for a second vote with Mugabe. But prior to that vote, he had to give in. So I think ZANU-PF is so entrenched in the system that it may take more than this election. It will certainly take more than this election before ZANU-PF will be threatened. I think the international community will play along. Nangagwa has shown the signs that he wants Zimbabwe to return to the Committee of Nations, and the international community will certainly give him a nod by their certification of this election at the end of the day. Finally, Mr. Eze, with what the recent events in Zimbabwe, the blast in Bulawayo, the army promising to stay neutral, is Zimbabwe ready to hold free, fair and credible elections? The true position is that uh, the political structure in Zimbabwe is still stead in favor of ZANU-PF. So, uh, from what we know about free and fair election, uh, that may take place, but uh, where the structure is already biased in favor of the party. Basically, I don't see the opposition going to have success in this election. This is ZANU-PF validation of election in favor of Emerson Nangawa. Uh, for the past 38 years, Zimbabwe has been under the truce of ZANU-PF. And ZANU-PF has used all mannerism of, man of, 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 of its own uh, strategies to, to actually be in charge of that country. I don't see the opposition shaking the situation now. Whether the army declares to be neutral or not, because the army already knows where the election will end. So by that declaration, it is just fulfilling our righteousness. We know that this election is an election for validation of ZANU-PF to continue in power in Zimbabwe. Mr. Chikwemeka is a, is a senior lecturer of international law at the Nasser State University. Many thanks for joining us from our studios.